the Bible isn't one book as much as it's 66 books. 66 books written over a period of about 1,600 years from 40 different authors on three different continents in three languages. Two major languages, Greek and Hebrew, and then one minor language, Aramaic. So we're not dealing with necessarily one book as we're dealing with a mini library of books. How do we know that objections like this aren't true? Really good point. It's and the translations apparently are so difficult to do. Yeah. The, apparently the tra especially Old Testament when they translated the Old Testament they had to translate it. I mean think of all the different languages it had to go through. It was sure. Latin and Greek and German and English and all these different languages that are so different. Like have you ever used the the translate button? Like uh, I follow a lot of Russian fighters oh. and they you know and they're. Uh, Instagram feed they write in Russian and right. I'm always like oh translate it's a really cool feature you could but you can tell it's not exactly what they meant because it's all fucked up because their language is different right like the way they structure sentences is yeah. different so English doesn't just plug and play right you know it's like sticking a USB 3 into a USB A like yeah. hey this doesn't really fit all right like, now add time Ugh. Add thousands of years and scrolls and, and like, kings who wanted things changed. Yeah, the, the King James version. What? Right. When you talk to people who hold these point of view, often what they communicate is something like this. They'll grant maybe that a person named Jesus actually existed and that he did have some sort of a message. That he spoke in Aramaic, which would be true. That is the language that Jesus spoke most of the time. And so if his immediate followers took what Jesus wrote and he wrote them down, they wrote it down in Greek. This is what we have, the original copies of the what we call the New Testament, the Gospels, those biographies of Jesus' life were written down in Greek. But here's where it goes wrong. They say, well, people, as time goes on, they're no longer speaking languages. They're not, no longer reading languages like Greek. They're reading languages like Latin. And so they take those Greek copies, they translate them into Latin, and they get rid of the Greek copies. They're old, dusty, nobody's using them anyway. And then more time goes on, and people aren't speaking Latin anymore. They're speaking languages like Old German. And so they take those Latin copies, they translate them into the German, they get rid of the Latin copies. And this goes on for a number of different languages until eventually you get to what we have as our modern English translations. And so in that sense, what they're thinking of is that you have a translation of a translation of a translation. The problem is that is not how you got your Bible. If you are holding a modern English translation of the Bible, it is not a translation of previous languages all the way up, a translation of a translation of a translation. When you hold a Bible, it's translated from those original languages that I referred to before. It's translated directly from the Hebrew and the Greek, and actually translation committees, these groups of scholars and academics who get together to translate the Bible and make it understandable in your language, in my language, they actually take into consideration how previous translations rendered certain things, but they're not translating from those previous languages, they're translating from the original languages. This is a confusion of translation versus transmission. Translation is going through one language into another. Transmission is the long history of how we go from texts written in ancient languages 2,000 years ago to today. Not only that, but with the telephone gain is a single line of transmission. But is that really what we have with the Bible? David Cross and Joe Rogan would say so, but if you look at the history of the Bible, what you find is that there were multiple authors writing at multiple times in multiple locations to multiple audiences who themselves were in multiple different locations. So it's not a single line of transmission, it's multiple lines of transmission injected with steroids. Why? Because not only do you have the original authors writing at different times to different places, to different people in different locations, but then you have scribes who are likewise copying in different locations, writing to different audiences at different times who are themselves in different locations. And if we look at the history of this, between the first century when the New Testament was written and the fourth century, you have copies of both the Old and the New Testaments being copied and spread around all over the ancient world so that by the time you get to the fourth century you have hundreds 
if not a few thousand copies of what we would call the books of the Bible. They were independent at that time. They eventually got stuck into one volume, like we think of a Bible today. But copies of the Gospels, of the Acts, of the Psalms, of the Prophets, floating around the ancient world. So that within a few decades and centuries, you have copies up into Europe, into Asia, and into North Africa. Which means that no one person or no one group could have controlled the text at any one point in time. 